Hello again, okay, so we were talking about the humerus last time and my aim is to talk about the bony bits of the bo <laughs> the bony bits of the bones, right? I want to talk about the bony bits. You guys tend to be pretty good at the bones, but the bony bits of the bones are important as well. And um, yeah, so we did the humerus and I want to move on to the, is this, uh, oh yeah it is, left again. I want to move on to the, the radius and the ulna. Today we'll do the radius, next time we'll do the ulna. This is left, so this is lateral, and this is medial, and this is the radius here. The radius is lateral. And you always remember the radius is lateral because that's the pulse, right? You always go for the pulse of the radial artery, and you know that's lateral, that's out here, that's on the side of the, of the that's on the side of your thumb, right? Because you're going for the radial pulse out here, lateral. So the radius is lateral, the ulna is medial. And the ulna is a little bit longer. You've got the olecranon on in there. So the, the ulna is a bit longer, the radius is a bit shorter. And look, they're articulating with the hinge joint here at the elbow, but then they're also articulating with the carpal bones at the wrist. These two bones are normally held together with elastic bands and Velcro and stuff, but they've come apart. So this, that's very distinctive, that thing here. That's the ulna, right? And these two go together like this. Okay, so can you see how the, the ulna is a little bit longer, because we've got this bit up here. Um, the radius is a little bit shorter, uh, and the radius, if the wrist end is down here, so this is distal and this is proximal, the radius is very noticeable because it has this nice round head here and it has this, has this large articulating surface at the wrist. So this is the radius. So as before, what I want to do is I want to talk about the prominent bony features of the radius. And there aren't that many, so this shouldn't take too long, right? Shouldn't take too long. Where have you heard that before? Probably in many of these videos. Why can I not speak for less than 20 minutes about anything? Um, okay. This is the head of the radius. Not this end. The head of the radius is, is this end here. This is the, the, the end that's up with the elbow. So the, the head of the radius is up here, all right? So if somebody has a fractured head of the radius, the fracture is close to the elbow, not close to the wrist. So this is the head of the radius, and look, it's nice and round, and it's articulating with the humerus uh, at the capitulum. Remember the little head, the capitulum of the humerus. So that's the that's the the head of the radius, and this is the neck of the radius. And then we have this very obvious prominent bulge here. This is simply named the radial tuberosity. It's a tuberosity. It's on the radius radial tuberosity um, and this is an attachment site for some of the biceps brachii muscle right so your biceps muscle here some of it will go and insert into the radius down there which will give you so the biceps is a muscle involved in flexion at the elbow joint so it crosses the elbow joint inserts into the radial tuber the radial tuberosity and pulls on the radius. But it also actually, there's, there are layers of fascia here, and many of the fibers of, uh, of, a, of there's, um, know, you can kind of see as you get in there, right? You can maybe see this on yourself, but you see that? See that in there? So there's the, there's the tendon, but if you, ooh. Mm, weird. Um, <laughs> do this on yourself, it's really cool, right? So find your, your biceps and you'll find that tendon there, all right? And some of that tendon is passing to the radial tuberosity, which is in there, but some of it is passing into the fascia, the antibrachial fascia of the forearm, all right? So it's got a really good attachment. Anyway, that's biceps brachii doing that. So radial tuberosity and the radial tuberosity marks the end of the neck of the radius and then we're into the shaft of the radius and that's most of the radius is the shaft of the radius but can you see how it's not round it's actually got a flat edge right so it's kind of triangular shaped and if we look at the ulna that also has a flat edge there that's also kind of more triangular shaped and the reason for that is is that 
between these two bones, they're connected by a flat sheet of connective tissue, the interosseous membrane. So a connective tissue membrane between the bones, interosseous. And that interosseous membrane then splits the anterior compartment of the forearm from the posterior compartment, right? So that's why they're, they're shaped like that. That's why it's not round. That's why it's got a kind of a, an edge coming off it. But as we, but that's it. We're then there, we're then to the distal end of the radius and the distal end of the radius flares out and becomes quite big. And that's because it's going to articulate with the carpal bones. If this is lateral and this is medial, this is going to articulate with the scaphoid bone and this is going to articulate with the lunate bone. And notice this, so if the scaphoid bone is here, we've got this nice big articulating surface to accommodate those two bones. So that's in our wrist, right? So we can, yeah. And the scaphoid bone is a commonly fractured bone. So if you land on an outstretched hand, then the force goes through here. The scaphoid bone is, it's at the base of the thumb, or rather it's be there's another bone in there, but the scaphoid bone is between the base of the thumb and the radius. The scaphoid bone commonly gets fractured. But can you see how we've got this, this sticky uppy bit here? All right? And this is the styloid process of the radius. And if the force is transferred through here and it's enough to fracture the scaphoid bone, there's a risk of a fracture to the styloid process as well. And that's a problem because I, th I think most of the blood supply to the styloid process is coming from within the bone. So if it fractures away from the bone and it moves slightly, then it's going to lose its blood supply and become necrotic. It's going to, it's going to die. So you kind of need to look out for the styloid process of the radius when you're looking at x-rays in this region and you're worried about fractures. Now going back to the... So we've got... So there are black bits on these bones because there, there's Velcro here, which is attached to these two bones together and the Velcro has kind of died. Um, but can you see up here, the head of the radius articulates with the ulna here. And we'll talk about this when we talk about the ulna, the bony bits of the ulna. At this end of the radius, If the styloid process is lateral, this is the left side, right? This is the left side, right? That's helpful. So this is the, the left side. If the styloid process is lateral, then medially we have the ulnar notch. So can you see there's a little notch cut away in the radius there, and that's where it articulates. That's where it articulates with the ulna at the distal end. Very neat and tight, isn't it? So these two bones are tied together quite well, but they do move around each other. So here's the radius in situ. This is a left arm. There's the thumb, All right? This is the thumb, so this is lateral. This is medial. And here's the radius. And we're missing the interosseous membrane and the other connective tissues holding these things together. But look, the ulna and the radius of course, we have pronation and supination. Pronation, supination, pronation, supination. So the reason for the, the shape of the head of the radius is so that it can articulate with the capitulum of the humerus, right? And this, look, this rotates and it brings the hand into a pronated position and it rotates and it supinates it. Very neat. And look, the tubercle moves around with it, which gives you some clues as to the functions of the muscles that attach to the tubercle. And look at this end here. This is what I was talking about. This end becomes much larger. So these carpal bones have a nice big surface to articulate with. And so you see how the force, if it goes through here and through there, that's the risk to the styloid process of the radius there. Um, so the distal end, we've got styloid process, ulnar notch. Can you see this other feature? So this is on the extensor side, on the dorsal surface. Can you see there's a tubercle there? 
So this is just the dorsal tubercle of the radius. It used to be called a uh, Lister's tubercle, I think. Um, and this is on the dorsal surface. So this is where we've got lots of um, extensor tendons running through into the hand here. So we've got extensor tendons running either side of that dorsal tubercle of the radius. We have the head, the neck, the radial tuberosity, and the shaft. We have the styloid process of the radius. We have the ulnar notch. We have this articulating surface for those two bones. And we have the uh, dorsal tubercle of the radius. All right. Some of these bony features are really important if you're looking at patients and you're worried about fractures and you want to describe where that fracture is. But some of these bony bits are useful to have heard of. So if you encounter them, you'll know what people are talking about. Okay, so that's it, the radius. I hope that's useful. You've now encountered all the bony bits of the radius. Um, and next week, we'll see how that plums into the ulna. All right, see you next time.